going on everyone john matrix here hope you're all having yourselves a wonderful day uh we're gonna be jumping into some more scp goodness here with the vulgan we're gonna be checking out uh new scp classifications the anomaly classification system explained again by the vulgan links will be down below in the description as always to the original channel and video without my commentary and reaction if you could please do me a favor if you enjoyed this video go give it a like and uh if you're not already subscribed to the vulgan and you enjoy his content please do me a favor go over there and give the man some love Give him a sub. He definitely deserves it. Makes a lot of wonderful content for the SCP universe. Puts a lot of time and effort into his videos. Definitely deserves it. Um, if you'd like to join us when we do these reactions live, we'd love to have you guys come in, join the conversation, add your two cents. There is a join button underneath the video as well as a link in the description to the uh, YouTube membership benefits and tiers that I offer. Check them out. If you've been around the channel for a while, decide you want to take your support to the next level. Um, but with all that said, let's jump into this video again. This is uh, the uh, new SCP classifications, the anomaly classification system explained by the Vulcan. Let's get it. Good afternoon, everyone. Oh, we got a face going My on name here. Is Dr. Miller, and today's lecture is. This is what, what I forget what it is because it's been a while since I watched it. But uh, what was the name of that little like? Was it Penny? The thing in uh, season one of Loki with. Uh, the time division or whatever the little like avatar thing that was talking to them reminds me of that anyway something a little <clears throat> bit different but just as informative today we're going to be studying a foundation internal memo from jean carlisle actus the director of site 81. going forward i will use this pre-recorded lecture to quickly educate anyone who has any questions or concerns about the anomaly classification system this is pretty important stuff, so let's begin. Let's begin. Let's do it. As many of you know, we recently concluded our last classification reassessment initiative, which we have taken to calling Reclass 2019. The purpose of this project was to assess how we currently classify anomalous entities and artifacts. The project was a joint effort between the American Site Directors Council, the Classification Committee Leadership Group, and O57's office. We are grateful for all the support we have received. The full report will be available in the coming days, but I wanted to reach out to you and provide a summary of our findings, as well as some ideas and alterations we are considering. It is our hope that we have addressed many of the extant issues with the current classification format and we give ourselves room to grow in the future. So, to begin, we tasked the team to assess our current format and how it is utilized when categorizing anomalies. After several weeks of research and deliberation, we narrowed it down to three main issues. Gotcha. Number one. Personnel feel that the current use of non-standard object classes is not clearly defined. Yeah, Number two, that would be a problem. Personnel feel that attempts to obfuscate non-standard object classes is detrimental to files where they are necessary. And number three. Personnel feel that the object class system does not identify containment priority or threats to their well-being. In order to address these issues, we had to take a long look at our current system. Our largest problem, as it typically is, seems to be one of communication and clarifying yeah. intent. I mean, and obviously, with a, an organization as secretive as they are and with how... They have to compartmentalize so many different things at so many different sites, and there's so many different secret things going on that only certain people need to have access to, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Having clear lines of communication, what things mean, and who have access to what, is obviously paramount. So, as our organization <clears throat> steps into the new century, we are met by many challenges. Foremost of which is our renewed dedication to the safety of our researchers, security personnel academic and administrative staff, and anyone else under the Foundation's umbrella. As such, we determined a more comprehensive format was required. As such, we'd like to present for your consideration the result of our efforts. The Anomaly Classification System. ACS. Okay. As I indicated earlier, the full details of this format will be available in the comprehensive report. Okay, so Keter, Disruption Class, VLAM, Reverse Class, Danger, okay, and so like, so yeah, like, this is what, at like, at a glance, so Keter is this symbol, Disruption Class, 
is this symbol so you can just sit there and like at a glance see this and it'll tell you you know essentially all you need to know for what the um scp is a class you know containment etc however i want to take a few short moments to identify the major characteristics of this model to start you'll notice that the area for item number classification level and object class has been fundamentally altered gotcha. the item number now features prominently on the left yeah. side of the document in large type font to make sure it is the first thing a reader will see on the screen to the far right is the new classification system, which we have upgraded to create a more distinct system than the one we have now. Classification levels remain 1 to 5, however, each gotcha. of these levels is now named per standard classification naming conventions. From lowest to highest clearance requirements, these levels are unrestricted, yep. fully available to all personnel, I thought regardless I thought about of level one's level. the lowest, etc. Restricted. Fully available to all personnel level 2 or above, unless otherwise specified. Confidential. Fully available to all personnel level 3 or above, unless otherwise specified. Secret. Fully available to all personnel level 4 or above, unless otherwise specified. And finally, top secret. Locked to all personnel without express permission or overseer clearance level. I figured there would probably be a couple levels above that, like for things that are like for what is it, the ethics committee's eyes only, the O5 council's eyes only, but maybe level five just kind of like encompasses all of that. Below the object number on the left side, you'll see the familiar object class has been exchanged for a more specific containment class. Containment classes should be used to specifically identify the challenges involved when containing an entity or artifact, and do not reflect some aspect of the entity itself. In addition, the classification committee has agreed to approve the reclassification of the five primary containment classes, safe, Euclid, Keter, neutralized, and explained, with pending as a transition class prior to classification. Gotcha. These are now considered esoteric containment is classes mean. and are to be utilized when there are no extenuating circumstances involved in containing an entity that would require clarification. The static classes stand in contrast to the sixth containment class, esoteric. Okay. The esoteric class is a catch-all containment class used when an object requires additional containment specifications that are not present within the five static classes. Gotcha. When you so it's something that essentially lands outside the other containment classes. Utilizing gotcha. the esoteric containment class, personnel should specify which containment class should be utilized in the box below. A full list of applicable... Gotcha. So yeah, so it's esoteric, and then it'll, it'll say, you know, esoteric, Keter, esoteric, Samuel, etc. Well, colors for various <coughs> esoteric classes will be available in the beta testing guide shortly. Notably, this option will not appear on the module when not in use. You'll notice the new Disruption and Risk class sections in the bottom center of the module. This is a feature we are currently testing to try to communicate priority and risk to our containment personnel, specifically by identifying which entities are the most likely to disrupt the general population were they to escape containment and what risk those entities pose to personnel immediately around them. Due to the Foundation's resources often being at a premium, our ability to maximize our efficiency and safety will be paramount as we move into the next century. Gotcha. There are five levels to the Disruption Class scale. Dark. Little to no potential to disrupt the okay. general population. Vlam. Low potential to disrupt the general population. Disruption is typically confined to a locality. Gotcha. Kenick, okay. Medium potential to disrupt the general population. Disruption is typically confined to a region or city. It's interesting how they're scaling it too. So like Dark has no potential to disrupt the general population. Vlam is probably like something that would be contained like maybe a house or a storage building. Like the IKEA 
uh, infinite Ikea would probably be labeled Vlam, right? Because it doesn't necessarily disrupt a greater area. It just is in, in this local thing or the, uh, the, the hotel, like living hotel thing that kind of targets SCP members that, uh, randomly appears in the middle of the night when they've been driving for a certain amount of time. That would be that. But then like Kenick, this would probably be like, um, the I, for, I can never remember the name of it it's the scp that deals with the 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 cheerleaders in the town having you know memory issues uh also all based around uh the high school that has different layers going down and that also kind of loosely ties into symphony syncope i can never remember it it's it's part of uh, some of the stuff with the class of 76 lore potentially as well, but that would be, I guess, Kenick because, you know, it encompasses kind of like a town. So, okay. The general population. I get it. Disruption is typically confined. So this, this is kind of like the how, how wide a scale, essentially, it affects things. You know, if it uh, doesn't affect much of anything, if it's just contained a, a building, a town, or is it something that could potentially affect a continent or the world? Find to a region or assume. city. Eki. High potential to disrupt the general population. Disruption is typically widespread, affecting yeah. major metropolitan areas Major or large cities or countries. Amida. Worldwide like world, disruption yeah. of the general population. Disruption is global and is a significant threat to established normalcy. Threats that have the potential to disrupt an area larger than the boundaries of the planet Earth fall within the bounds of the Amida classification. Gotcha. There are also five levels to the <coughs> risk class scale. Notice. The anomaly in question has low risk potential. Individuals nearby may feel minimal effects from the anomaly, but these effects rarely pose any harm or even discomfort. Caution. The anomaly in question has a moderate risk potential. Individuals nearby will likely experience the effects of the anomaly, and these effects may cause discomfort or harm. Warning. The anomaly in question has a high risk potential. Individuals nearby will likely experience the acute effects of the anomaly and will be at risk for experiencing severe harm up to and including death. Dangers. Danger. The anomaly in question has a very high risk potential. Individuals nearby will invariably be exposed to harm up to and including death. So yeah, this is then going into, you know, obviously as I said, so it goes into the type of containment it has and then the, how widespread of uh, an issue the anomaly could have affect and now how dangerous the anomaly is. You know, something that's low risk to moderate risk to you need to be cautious to you need to be definitely on your guard. It's going to be extremely dangerous. And I guess critical here is going to be like, yeah. Again, something kind of like highly threatening. Individuals you're likely going to die if you to face this. Up to and including death. These effects are very difficult to mitigate. Critical. The anomaly in question has an extremely severe risk potential. Individuals nearby will invariably be exposed to acute, life-threatening harm. These effects cannot be mitigated. Lastly, on the bottom right of the module, you will see a new symbol that provides an at-a-glance view of the four primary information sections within this new system. Containment class, esoteric class, if applicable, disruption class, yep. and risk class. Gotcha. These new so yeah, you can just kind of basically go over here and see at a glance everything you really need to know. And then, I mean, it sees, shows the item level, the clearance level, and then containment risk, etc. level. Specification diamonds will be posted on the exterior of containment cells of anomalous entities and artifacts to provide efficient and consistent communication of all applicable challenges. I got you. The purpose of these changes are to provide better communication between our classification officials and our boots-on-the-ground containment personnel. However, 
While we feel this is a major improvement over the prior model, we understand that there will be those who do not feel comfortable adapting to this new format and will push back against it. This is un In that case, you will be shot. Understandable and reasonable. And since the current format is still within our standard, there is still no reason to force anyone to adapt to it. However, we will be beta testing this format at Site 81. And so you may okay. see many of the existing files from our site change in the coming weeks. Gotcha. There are several okay. other sites who are currently considering joining us in beta testing this format as well, and hopefully we will see a wider adoption going forward. Thank you again for everyone involved in this project. Most sincerely, Jean Carlyle Actus, Director, Site 81. Gotcha. All right. I hope this was informative, and I would like to thank every member of staff who was involved in bringing the ACS to life, as I think it will have a definite positive impact on how we classify anomalies, True. it will make everyone's life easier, and most importantly, it will save lives. So thank you again to everyone who was involved. True. So, I mean, I would assume that this, like, out of his videos could be used on the wiki to like at a glance for anyone who's an author who's writing a story they could use something like this so that they could show someone at the top of their article at a glance you know okay it's gonna be this class containment danger disruption you know so they can get essentially an assessment of uh the kind of scp they're going to get into how dangerous it is and just get a general overall idea of you know what the the scp article is probably going to be about uh for me it's just also nice to know because uh there's definitely been some videos where they're talking about different kinds of threat level classifications and stuff like that that i haven't been necessarily 100 percent familiar with but i mean from like a practical standpoint really technically at a glance it's yeah very easy to understand this is what the scp number is this is the uh clearance level you need in order to actually read the article and then at a glance you can see essentially you know it's containment disruption danger uh level etc etc um so yeah very easy to understand and learn and the fact that they've also um you know how difficult is it to contain how widespread uh is the anomalous uh capabilities of whatever this scp is and how dangerous is it to the people who are going to you know be exposed to it or try to contain it etc so yeah very simple very uh uh efficient system so i'm curious if I, I would assume that, yeah, like I said, that this is something that authors could adapt. I'm curious if people have or not. Um, because let's see what this was this video was made three years ago. I personally haven't looked at a ton of articles on the, the SCP wiki. Um I do at some point kind of want to do some, you know, article reading things and videos of my own, kind of like this. Um it's really just trying to find the time at the moment to like figure out how I want to do them and edit them and all that kind of stuff because still having an IRL job and all of the things it's just hard to find the time to really sit down and be able to do a lot of that but uh it is something that I do want to do I want to get into creating uh you know some of my own SCP videos as well as some 40k videos and theory crafting you know things and what if videos for both the SCP and 40k and other universes and stuff like that so um you know this could be obviously something that i could you know potentially adapt for some of those things so that's nice to know but uh so yeah that was um <clears throat> the new scp classifications the anomaly classification system explained by the vulgan links will be down below as always in the description to the original video without my commentary and reaction and to the vulgan's channel please do me a favor click those links uh if you enjoyed this video as we went through it Go over there and give it a like and uh if you're not already subscribed to the vulcan please do me the favor of going over there and giving him a sub uh if you enjoy his content he, he makes a lot of great content man and he definitely deserves it puts a lot of time and effort into his videos uh and he's he's just a great creator uh so he definitely deserves the support if you'd like to join us when we do these reactions live there is a join button underneath the video as well as a link in the description 
to the YouTube membership benefits and tiers that I offer. Take a look at those. You've been around the channel for a while and decide you want to take your sport to the next level. Uh, you can get early access videos, uh, pre-ordering any kind of reaction requests you might uh, want me to take a look at. Stuff like that. So let's take a look, see if it have any interest for you. Regardless of all that, thank you guys for watching the video. I appreciate you taking the time to do so. Hope you enjoyed it. I hope you're having a wonderful day. If you enjoyed this video, consider leaving a like and a sub as it helps me and the channel grow. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Have a good one. We'll see you in the next one.